Hello Andy and welcome to Zurich. It was very nice having you around here for the past four days for the Chain Fusion ICP lab. Do you maybe want to tell us a bit more about who you are and what you're building? My name is Andy. Uh, we're building a decentralized mining pool and on top of it, we are building a forward hash rate marketplace. What is a forward hash rate marketplace? Okay. Explain it like I'm five. Yeah. Okay. In simple terms, if you're a corn farmer, for example, or you're 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 farmer or or of anything basically, and then you would like to sell, let's say your harvest in July, and then you would like to sell your uh, July harvest and get the money now rather than waiting for the July harvest to happen. And then you can use that money to basically open another farm or use it to fund your operation. And we're doing that uh, on Bitcoin miners. So Bitcoin miners can sell their future hash rates and get the money right now and then probably double their operation or use their money, whatever. And then also this money also uh, can use as a hedging instrument because their cost is in uh, fiat, mm, no. and then their reward is in Bitcoin. So basically, if locking the price of Bitcoin right now can help their to stabilize their the volatility of the price in the future. Interesting. I guess it's pretty relevant right now, right? Because I mean, a couple of weeks or months ago, BTC was 115k, now uh, back to somewhat yes. 80. So is this something that local mining then solves for miners, right? Yes, precisely. Yeah. Awesome. And um, so if you kind of like switch context and you think about people that are not miners, but still want to use local, what, what can they do with the platform? How do they benefit? So I think in a, in a sense, uh, what we're solving is uh, access to finance for miners. And this is also actually provide opportunity for the investor on the other side. This is a two-sided marketplace, basically. On the supply side is Bitcoin miners. And then the on the other side, on the demand side, is basically investors who provide finance for these Bitcoin miners. So if you're if you're a Bitcoin miners and you're selling your future hash rates, basically you're selling at a a bit uh, lower price because obviously if you're like getting your money up front, you will give some a bit of discount. Mm -hmm. So this delta is providing the investors yield. Mm -hmm. So it allows me to kind of like as a miner to, to, to scale my operation a bit more quickly because I don't have to wait until like after, I don't know, maybe exactly. years, the first yes. blocks tickle in and I finally have something to, to pay my yes. electricity bill with. Yes. And then if you're like, basically, if you're th th this Bitcoin miner selling at oh, the price of Bitcoin is 100K, Basically, he got the money in stable. He can go for the, uh, basically in stable. And then it, it's basically locked the price on 100K. And whatever the price will be tomorrow, or like, for example, today, Bitcoin price yesterday uh, down to 80, and then now like 86, for example, mm. they already lock their yield. Mm. But from the other uh, side, where the, uh, uh, basically from, from, from the investor, it's it's like, they already get the Bitcoin price lo lower than the market. So it doesn't really matter for them. Yeah. In the past, I think I've, I've, I've heard that sometimes those cloud miners, they're a bit, bit shady, right? It's, yeah. if, if you use Loka, which is built on a, on a, on a blockchain, right? On, on the internet computer, is this something that, that can be solved through this? Yes. One of the biggest problem in cloud mining uh, scene is the ecosystem or like basically there's a lot of companies that actually, I think in the past few years, there's a lot of companies that sells contract or like, for example, okay, give me some money and then I will use that money to buy a mining machine and then the reward from this machine, I'll give it back to you, mm -hmm. right? But then there's no guarantee that if I'm this company, if I accept the money and I just run away no. with that money. So what we are solving is also this, we, we're at the, at the protocol level, we basically require miners or their insurers to put Bitcoin as a collateral on this contract. So let's say there's a force majeure that electricity cut off or whatever, there's flood in, the, in this, this mining operation or simply uh, there's something happen the the investor is actually being protected from this collateral because 
the protocol will check basically like our decentralized mining pool, the hash rate goes to our decentralized mining pool and the protocol will check if the the miners actually deliver the hash rate according mm. to the contract or not. Yeah. Are you also providing hash rate to your decentralized mining pool? We come from the our background is actually we're mining Bitcoin since 2017. But it's not a very big operation. It's like yeah. small medium miners. That's why we understand this uh, business. So struggles. yes, understand the struggles of from the miners perspective. And it's a kind of like now it's a separate uh, separate entities from the local mining protocol. So local mining is live and in production, right, at the moment? Yeah, we have our decentralized mining. The forward hash rate protocol is going to be live sometimes next queue. Very cool. And did you already manage to onboard uh, miners that contribute yes. the hash rate to your... Yes, yes. We have quite uh, sizable smaller miners and we also have a contract LOI uh, agreement with the bigger mining companies that operates in Kazakhstan, Russia, Ethiopia, and several other countries. Very cool. How was that feeling that you kind of like put Luca out there and then really the, the first miners coming, contributing their hash rate? Uh, how, how did that feel for you? Was it I mean, it's it's interesting and fascinating. It's also scary. The, like basically, we, we there's a lot of trust that being uh, put on us, and we we need to like basically there's. All the infrastructure, all the everything needs to be perfect. All the smart contracts needs to be properly audited. So yeah, that's that's kind of like the it's a big responsibility for us. Yeah, I can imagine. Awesome! Thank you so much for for coming and talking to us. And uh, I wish you safe travels back. And hopefully we'll see each other soon. Thank you, Moritz. Thank you.